right, how's it going, everyone? This is Grant Horvath, Ben Cole, Addy Rodman, Colleen McCoshin, Katie Erickson. We got a full group here to talk to you about Boyer ERP Connect Essentials today. We're going to give it about another minute, but for all of you that hopped on, we'll be running all of our questions through the chat box. So if everybody could click their chat button real quick and let us know what city you're coming from, let's make sure we're getting this thing going here. Right. So I put Denver in there. If everyone else could hop in the chat box real quick, let's make sure it's working. We got Minneapolis, Frisco, Victoria, Austin, Kansas City, Las Vegas, Springfield. We got people coming from all over here. <laughs> all right, this is awesome. So we got a chat box working. We're looking good on this end. We're at one minute past the hour. Addie, go ahead and lead us off. Hello, everybody. I am Addie Rodman here, joining you from our Boyer team. With me is Katie and Colleen, as Grant kind of kicked us off here and warmed everybody up. Um, love seeing the cities in the chat. Um, but I am our director of client success here at Boyer. So if we haven't met, lovely to see all your names and faces. If we have, nice to see you again. Really excited for today's webinar. Um, the ERP Connect team is really an extension of Boyer and what they have built for us. So Ben and Grant and Dean, um, what they have built is a really cool toolkit of add-ons that um, integrate directly into Business Central. And there are, I mean, I, I was just saying this morning, I can't think of one person on Business Central that wouldn't benefit from the tools here. So we partnered really closely with this team um, and we're really excited to to grow that partnership and see our clients get the benefits out of what it is they have built. So I don't want to take up too much time because they're going to try and cover absolutely as much as they can today on the essentials bundle. Um, but as Grant said, please put questions in the chat. Um, we will follow up during chat and after. And with that, I will pass it over to Grant. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thank you very much, Addie. So everyone on this call will be talking about Boyer ERP Connect Essentials. These are going to be our tools, like Addie said, that everyone can benefit from in BC. Before we hop into the agenda, those of you that have already filled out the form to get coffee for this meeting, you should have that in your inbox. If you don't, please out, reach out to myself or Ben. If you are on this call and you haven't filled out the form yet, we just posted the form in the chat as well. We'll send you free coffee afterwards. We're really excited for it. What we're gonna focus on today, number one, we're gonna start with the gaps currently in Business Central out of the box. We're going to talk about the solutions that Boyer ERP Connect has to fill those gaps. Ben's going to be going into a live demo for about 35 minutes on our financial and sales dashboard, warehouse dashboard, history and statistics and invoice and statement delivery. We'll wrap this up with resources and we'll finish with the Q&A. So first things first, let's talk about the gaps in Business Central out of the box. Right now, BC doesn't necessarily have reporting available to you immediately when you get Business Central set up. You know, you may not know as a user what KPIs or metrics you're looking for on day one. So if you're getting started on BC, you might not really have a full understanding yet of what matters most to your business or how you can leverage BC. It takes time and monies for users to create a solution with Boyer, their partner. We want to bridge that gap and decrease the amount of time it takes. Emailing documents is manual and time consuming. BC doesn't really have too much in the form of automation out of the box for invoicing. And there's no way to send automated reminders, statements, payment receipts, or recurring invoices. So what's the solution here? The solution is four out of the box dashboards focused on financial, sales, warehouse data, Every single extension that Boyer ERP Connect offers is built natively into BC. These dashboards are going to give you over 75 KPIs in what Ben likes to call a one-stop shop. Each dashboard takes under 30 minutes to configure and train on. And of course, that invoice and statement delivery extension is going to help send invoices, 
customer statements and payment receipts automatically when posted from a dashboard and from a job queue. Now we like to get into things as soon as possible here. So I'm gonna pass it off to Ben. He's gonna roll through our four dashboards as well as invoice and statement delivery, and we're gonna get it going. Sound good, Ben? Awesome. Uh, let me know if you can see the screen right there, Grant. It should be up on my AR view. <clears throat> yes. Awesome. So like Grant said, we're gonna kind of split this session into uh, two different kind of subject areas, right? So the first piece we're gonna focus on is all of our dashboards and automation tools, starting with the financial dashboard. Then towards the end, we'll get more into our uh, automation and productivity side of things where invoice and statement delivery continues to kind of be our most uh, downloaded app and uh, a client favorite when it comes to uh, automation efforts. So without further ado, we will jump straight into the financial dashboard. Like Grant mentioned, all of our tools are gonna to be natively built into Business Central. How I kind of like to articulate that is if we downloaded this, you probably wouldn't even know that it's uh, kind of like a custom uh, reporting solution that's embedded here, simply because it looks and feels like Business Central since it is directly written in Business Central with native AL language. Um, and it's surfaced directly through your search up here um, in Business Central. So with that, the financial dashboard and the goal here was to get some reports, metrics, KPIs, all that good stuff on day one. There's some things you can surface in Business Central today, like your AR aging. If anybody's used the AR aging out of box in Business Central, that kind of gives you that PDF or Excel document. Uh, I'm sure you've had lackluster uh, results with that. So this was our first attempt at building something that was a little bit more meaningful. As we go through some of these kind of triggers and drill downs, it's going to apply across the system. So again, we'll start with AR since this one typically is a fan favorite when it comes to uh, accounting departments for clients. So the first thing you'll see here over on the left is a pie chart. This pie chart is showing all of your AR data split between the buckets. So let's say you want to drill into the 31 to 60 bucket to see what that $130,000 is made up of or 20% of your total AR, right? <clears throat> you can simply click into that and that will pop open a list of all of the different documents that makes up that balance. What you'll notice is that we're in the customer ledger entries at this point. So we're taking something that we've now built and embedded and overlaying kind of the out of box function. So from here you can do, you know, your standard applications, your finding of the entries, uh, you can show the documents and you can even <clears throat> export or open this uh, in Excel. So again, taking some standard functionality as we drill down for things that you're probably already familiar with. So the ramp up time after you plug this in, kind of like Grant said, right? It only takes about 30 minutes to get up and running, which is the beauty of a product like this. It's mostly pre-configured. There's a few options you have when we get to our KPIs and things like that, which we'll show in a second, but most of it is intended to be I'll say as plug and play as possible. I don't think anything is truly plug and play. You always have to do something you know, minor, but we try to eliminate as much time as possible. The next thing over here, this is just gonna be a list of all of your customers, right? So you can quickly and intuitively filter up and down. You can see we already have a filter pre-applied on balance due. So anybody who has a balance is gonna show in this list. And then again, if you were to come into one of the balances here, maybe I wanna know what this 36,000 is made up of similar to how we did on the pie chart. I can click in here right away, see all the invoices. And again, we're just in our customer ledger entries right here. The final piece, which on the AR dashboard is probably more familiar to most, uh, we can kind of hide this to give us uh, some more real estate here, is our uh, detailed or summary AR aging, right? So here's gonna be your traditional customer list, where they're located, phone numbers, contact, their payment terms, credit limits, payment dates, um, and then all of your buckets. So again, if you wanted to see, okay, what makes up this, you know, $18,421, you can go ahead and click on that. And again, it's gonna show you all of the invoices that are associated there. Again, intuitively, you can filter up and down if you wanted to do some analysis on maybe your oldest invoices that are outstanding with your customers. And then probably my personal favorite piece here, we have this average paydays. So think of that as your day sales outstanding per customer. So we've added in a calculation here. It's a, a custom calculation where then you can take this and compare it to your payment terms, right? So if on average, this customer is paying us within 123 days, but their payment terms are seven days, that's not a real good, uh, that's, that's a good indicator that they're not paying on time, right? Whereas maybe if they're paying on average in seven days, but their payment terms is 30, 
we can quickly look at that and see kind of who's paying on time and who's not. That average paydays will also be utilized when we get into our cash forecasting, because in my opinion, the payment terms don't really mean much if they never pay you uh, on those days, right? So we use the average paydays to kind of do some uh, predictive analytics, right, on when the customers are actually going to pay us. And then those are the types of numbers that we're actually utilizing inside of our cash flow forecast. As we come across the top here, I'll be jumping into various kind of subject areas. So we're on the accounts receivable tab right now. I'm going to spend about 60 seconds on the accounts payable tab just because it's going to look very identical to the AR piece, just of course with all of your vendor data. This is just saying I probably haven't uh, been in here in, in a day, so it's going to recalculate real quick. And at this point, you'll notice it looks literally exactly the same as we saw on the AR side, right? So you have all your buckets. You can go ahead and uh, drill down again into those buckets. We can see all the vendors that we owe money. You can sort high to low. <clears throat> and then, of course, if you come down here, we can see all of our different um, AP details for all of our vendors, who owes what. You can sort high to low. Uh, you can come in here and uh, drill down into any of these uh, buckets if you'd like. And then the last thing, which I'll show here in a second, is the ability to take this and open it directly uh, in Excel. So taking this tool, we also have a tool in our essentials bundle, which is what we're talking about today, called advanced accounting. Advanced accounting will actually allow you to take some of these reports that we're looking at today, like your AR aging, AP, balance sheet income statement, and a handful of others, and actually directly receive those into your inbox on a daily basis. So if you're somebody who wants to uh, get into the office and just have your AR aging directly at your fingertips in your inbox. We have the ability to do that via email, uh, and we can do that with multiple reports, like I mentioned. Uh, the other thing we can do with advanced accounting is automate your vendor remittances. So as you're sending remittances to your vendors, we can automatically send those remittances on post. We likely won't have time to go through all of that today, but just did want to mention it while we're talking about that uh, auto emailing of the reports. <clears throat> The next tab I'm going to jump into here is our general tab. And again, as we go through the financial dashboard, the idea behind all of this is really to get a health check on your business, right? So you're looking at your AR and your AP to see maybe who's who's overdue, who you need to go call to collect from, which will get into some automation, invoice and statement delivery about how to do that. But ultimately checking these metrics to see kind of are we on track? Are we on target? Are things you know getting out of hand or maybe they better than expected? And that really comes into play here with our KPIs and our balance checks. So the KPIs are just a quick way to set some of your own goals. And then from those goals, compare your actual data. So in this case, I've got a goal of 40% gross margin uh, percent and our actual is 59. So we're good to go there. Uh, we're on target. Same with net margin. AR payments on time. I want to get 70% of all of our customer payments in before their due date. In our demo instance right now, 77% of our customers are paying on or before their due date, which is great. Day sales outstanding. So this is taking it at a company level, right? So uh, on average, I want to get paid within 25 days of sending those invoices out. We're getting paid 16.41 days. Again, great. AP payments on time, 70%. I want to get our vendors paid on time. <clears throat> and right now we're doing 92%. So again, health check to be able to see, are we tracking towards our goals? Are we under? Are we over? Um, all of that good stuff. The balance checks, this is one piece that I always find to be <clears throat> key, both with new implementations, as well as people who are kind of monitoring this from an ongoing basis. And we honestly see this uh, used in both situations most of the time. So what this is going to do very quickly is take the GL balances that you have today and compare them to your subledger. So in this case, uh, AP is good. I've got you know $564,000 in my GL, same in my subledger, but all these other things I need to go look at, right? Somehow my, my banks aren't tying, my inventory isn't tying, my AR isn't tying. Those are all things then <clears throat> that we can take next steps on to help you out with and take a look to make sure that we tie those out again and then turn that direct posting button off so that this doesn't happen again, right? It's both a point in time check as well as a proactive measure in order to make sure that things don't get out of balance over time. And as everybody knows, the more time you go with uh, maybe things not being in balance, the harder it is to correct once you get to that point. So if you can catch it early and often, like anything in life, right? It, it makes it a lot easier to <laughs> resolve or change in the meantime. The next thing we have down here is our 
<clears throat> financial statements. So you can just pick your favorite four uh, financial statements in Business Central today. I typically will show like a balance sheet and income statement. You can have different row and layout uh, definitions. So again, I've got like a 12 month over here. Again, kind of just your one stop shop to be able to see all of that high level financial data <clears throat> directly in your system. If you want to break these out more granularly, we can see financial report one and two here. Uh, I don't have three and four configured, but if I did, those buttons would also be showing up here up top in the ribbon. Um, Grant, I'm going to do a quick uh, Q&A uh, check. I highly encourage questions throughout the session while, where, rather than waiting for all of them to be answered at the end just while we're on the subject area. So any questions right now before we jump into inventory, sales, and cash? Yeah, Ben, so I'm just going to reiterate this for the entire group because very good point came in through the chat box. Uh, very cool, but already can't write fast enough. Will this be available to us at a later date? So we will be sending out a recording. Uh, that's awesome, too. I know we've got a lot of really good content here. So not only will you get the recording, but we do have a comprehensive YouTube channel as well that has walkthroughs and every single one of our app source listings does have a user setup guide as well. So you're going to be fully equipped. You're going to be good to go. Other than that, Ben, chat box looks clean. Awesome. We will keep going there. Um, so again, so far we're looking at some of the high level data. As we get into uh, another one of our tools, our history and statistics, we'll take a deeper dive, but kind of continuing at that high level um, kind of data view for now. We are now jumping into our inventory cash and sales tabs. We'll get into warehouse dashboard, which has even more deep dives into inventory. But think of this as your high level from a financial view, right? So where's all your inventory by item category? So we've got a lot of computer hardware, some software and some small parts. Uh, where does all of that inventory sit today, right? So it looks like I've got uh, $68,000 worth in Chicago, $74,000 worth of Dallas, some returns and in transit, and then a little bit in Tampa, right? And you can start to play around with this. It's all very interactive. Um, so usually we'll encourage people just to get this in their system, download a free trial if, if they're interested, uh, and play around with it with your own data because it's always more meaningful, right? Uh, the next things we have here are inventory warnings. So again, kind of that health check, that high level. Do we have any items that are negative in our inventory right now? Do we have any inventory adjustments that we need to monitor? And then finally, our inventory valuation and statistics. So this is just going to show you all of your items, what categories they're in, uh, how many you have on sales orders. So if you wanted to see current state of the union, right, I've got 120 of these Microsoft Surface 8s on open sales orders right now, and I've got 38 on purchase order. We only have 105 on hand. So again, probably need to fulfill some of those purchase orders to fulfill those uh, sales orders. What's our day supply, our lead time? We've got some key ratios here for inventory, like your day sale lead time ratio. Uh, average daily sales, your inventory valuation, sales numbers, purchase numbers. I won't get too deep into it for the sake of time, um, as well as your primary vendor that you're buying this item from. But again, just a lot of information and data at your fingertips. And of course, I always like to uh, demo the drill downs because now you can see all of the different um, sales invoices, purchase invoices, shipments, all that kind of stuff that uh, makes up those numbers if you're somebody who likes to drill down uh, into the weeds and maybe even export that out to um, Excel, right? So general theme here is data at your fingertips, being able to drill down as well as see kind of some high level data. And again, we'll spend more time on the warehouse and the sales dashboard. We just started with some, honestly started with some tabs here uh, about a year and a half ago, and I had so much demand on, hey, we want all these additional sales metrics. And we couldn't fit them all here on one page, so we just ended up creating a completely new dashboard specifically for sales and specifically for warehousing. So this is our sales dash, or this is our sales tab on our financial dashboard. You can see some quick metrics about how your sales by global dimension one and two are, minor customer and employee, how your sales by general business and product posting group are doing, what your sales funnel looks like. This is usually people's um, favorite one. We can toggle these dates back and forth. So if I just wanted to see month to date, I can see all the different uh, orders, quotes, the ones that are pending prepayments, the ones that have been released, right? And I can click on any of these again with that drill down and see all of the different sales orders that are in that status. Uh, here I can see who my top customers are by the date range that I've selected up top here. Um, if you don't like any of the date ranges that we've provided out of box in the settings, uh, you can put a custom date range on here. So uh, fully flexible in terms of uh, what you'd like to do there. And then the final piece down here, 
let's make a better filter because I've only sold one item it looks like recently. Let's do last 12 months. Maybe uh, let's do. All right, there we go. Um, <clears throat> top items, top items by profit. So we can see that we're selling $163,000 worth of this Microsoft Surface 8 and we're making $83,000. Um, so about a 50% margin there. Um, again, this just kind of helps keep in line. What are the top items I'm selling and are those items that I'm selling also my most profitable items? So again, just kind of a quick glance there at the, the sales piece. And then the final piece on the cash, uh, the cash tab here for the financial dashboard is some metrics around your bank accounts, your liquid assets, your cash flow forecast, and your historical cash usage. So the first thing that you'll see here is this posting group balance, um, as well as our balances by bank. So these would be all my different bank accounts. A lot of times you'll be setting up your credit cards as bank accounts as well. So you can see those reflected here as negative amounts. Um, and then of course your checking are gonna be positive amounts here. We took what we had in that general tab and broke it out even more granularly here for bank accounts alone. So you can see all of your bank accounts, what GL account uh, those are posting to based on the bank account posting group, your uh, bank account posting group balance and your GL balance. So again, if you see that your bank accounts aren't tying out in the general tab, you can now come here and see more granularly which bank accounts specifically aren't tying out. So in this case, I don't need to look at American Express or Chase Credit. Really, I just need to go look at my Chase checking one, two, three, four, and see why my group balance is slightly lower than my GL balance. Probably something was posted incorrectly to our general ledger, right? But that'll help you clean it up, turn direct posting off, and then you're on your way again, uh, kind of maintaining that in compliance, right? Next, we've got our liquid assets. So this is, we can get into the setup uh, when we download our, our demo, but you have the option in addition to the bank accounts, to include some clearing accounts that would also be, you know, cash equivalents, we'll call them. Uh, so you can see those here. This is your historical cash usage. So how has cash trended uh, over the last uh, couple of months? And then this final piece is probably one of my favorites where we can actually take and calculate our future cash forecast. What this is doing is it's looking at all of your uh, <clears throat> current cash balances, your projected receipts, your AR, your AP, and you can even put in recurring expense budgets. So think of things like payroll typically, where they're not necessarily gonna be in your accounts payable, but you absolutely wanna make sure that those are cash flowed. So for anything that isn't gonna hit a sub ledger, you can put those in kind of a budget here, and then we can even export this to literally see day by day what we expect our uh, inflows and outflows to be for those various um, data points. So I know I spent a lot of time on the financial dashboard, but just to kind of get the general framework of where we're at, this is definitely one of the <clears throat> most popular. And for anybody getting started with reporting and analytics, this is a great tool to have just because it looks at all aspects of your business from general ledger to AP to AR to inventory and cash and kind of gives you that high level health check uh, into your numbers. This is that uh, cash flow forecast day by day. And again, the main reason that we created something like this is because we found it cumbersome to kind of build this out manually in Business Central. So you might not get as granular of, of details, but it takes basically no setup uh, and is just taking out of box data that's already there in order to start building out some of these kind of predictive analytics. So Grant, I'll take another pause before jumping over to our uh, history and statistics and sales dashboard, but any other questions in the chat right now before we move forward? Nothing on this end so far, Ben, but uh, for everyone on the call, we're uh, big emoji people. This has been financial dashboard. We got a bunch more to talk through, but let's take a quick pause. If everyone can go to the react button, if you found at least one thing you're excited about for financial dashboard, throw us a heart, throw us a thumbs up. Let's see what we got so far. Got a bunch of hearts, bunch of thumbs up. Ben's giving us a heart too. All right, awesome. So yeah, if anyone has questions, hop in the chat. We're excited to dive into this next piece here and we're excited that people are finding stuff that's beneficial. Awesome. So we're at about, we're about 25 minutes in. So I'm going to kind of take these at a high level just to make sure that we can get to some of our other areas. But again, the, the things that we just learned in financial dashboard are going to apply across all of these. So now I'm jumping into the sales dashboard. You'll notice that this looks very similar to things that we saw before, right? So the look and feel is very similar. Yes, we are going into a new page, uh, but there's, there's nothing new in terms of navigation, just different things that we're seeing. So 
I like to start on this one because a lot of people, a lot of times people like this one the most. This is our um, sales dashboard geo view. So I've got it combined, but you can split these up if you wanted to see like just US on one page. Right now we have a US view, uh, a Canadian view if we have any clients in uh, Canada, and then we also have this world view down here. So it's gonna be kind of a basic uh, bubble chart. And I like to use this because in this example, we can see you know most of the stuff we're selling is in the central United States or on the East Coast. So if you know if we've got our main warehouse out in California or something like that, that probably doesn't make a ton of sense, right? We probably want to put it somewhere in Tennessee or somewhere that's uh, central so that we can you know save on our costs or we can double down on uh, where we're selling most, right? I'm in Dallas, so it makes sense that most of my demo data is in Texas here, but that just kind of helps you pinpoint where you're doing most of your sales. As we go across these, again, we'll have different metrics and different data points that you can utilize. And by downloading this, again, I would say about 80 to 90% of it takes no configuration at all. There are some options that you can select as we get into things, but for the most part, again, like I say, it's, it's mostly um, plug and play as we go through here. So now we're on the buy date. This is simply showing you your sales, how much you've done today, this week, this month, this year, uh, what your sales by date trends are, kind of in a little line chart there, as well as your uh, margin analytics, how much you've sold over the last six years. So this is just showing kind of one bar per year. And then down here, we can see our monthly sales for the current fiscal year. So um, looks like I've posted some things out to, to February and March already. Uh, but again, as you start to build out your year, this will show you the 12 months for that year. Um, we've got by item, by dimension, by salesperson, by customer. So pretty much all the different ways you can think of slicing and dicing your data. We've got something that's kind of prepackaged already that'll allow you to uh, see into that data. So now we're on the uh, buy item tab. So here you're going to see all of your items down the left side, all of your item categories across the top. And again, just some analytics to see what you're selling by item category, uh, total item categories down here, and then all of your items by date ranges. And again, um, this looks like it's going month to month. I could literally look at you know the last 30 days, for example, and it's going to show me day by day how much we've sold. So by changing those filters and, and changing the data that you're looking at, it's also changing um, all of those grids. By dimension, uh, I'll talk about here for a second. Most people, as they're starting to implement Business Central, uh, get introduced to dimensions maybe for the first time, or if their old system uh, used dimensions, then great. Dimensions are a powerful tool to do uh, reporting and analytics. So this allows you to take uh, kind of your X by Y axis and put your two favorite dimensions in there, typically your global one and global two, and then start to slice and dice some of that data. Um, in addition to being able to do kind of your X by Y axis, let me update the date range here. There we go. Um, this is just going to take your first two globals. So we've got customer and employee again. And then again, you can pick one dimension down here and kind of analyze it. Um, again, I did last 30 days. Let's do last 12 months just to get some data populated there. And again, what this is going to do is going to show you all of your dimensions and you can start to you know take a look at the data and even start to uh, drill into that data to see exactly what those balances make up so again just a bunch of different ways to look at your sales data um, you know we're going to jump over to our next one history and statistics here in a second but i'll just finish this out real quick so that we can spend a good chunk of time on history and statistics because that's one of my personal favorites but we've also got the ability to see how your salespeople are doing so if you're tracking that um, you can come in here, see all the different salespeople, how much they're selling by date, uh, sales by date by salesperson, top salespeople uh, based on what they're selling. And again, all of that you can filter down by um, various date ranges. Um, let's pop into these last two and then we'll be right at about the half hour mark. We can jump into our last two dashboards and then I wanna save about 15 minutes or so for invoice and statement delivery so that we can get into some of the automation efforts here. So again, we've gone through the geos, the dates, the items, the dimensions, just showing a bunch of different ways here that you can slice and dice your data. The last piece will be these back ordered um, sales orders. So if you have a lot of instances where <clears throat> you know, you're not able to uh, order or procure your items in time, this will show you kind of a quick glance at everything that's needed um, in order to fulfill these um, sales orders. You can see sales orders um, back ordered by item. So most of our 
uh, back orders coming from the Surface 8 and the computer starter kit, and then all the orders that have some sort of back ordered item on, you can see right here in this grid as well. All right, so so far the two dashboards we've looked at have been very high level, right? Kind of company wide, what are we doing um, in terms of uh, again our health check, right? At these various data points. The next thing I'm going to jump into is called history and statistics, and what history and statistics does is allow you to do a deep dive into one record very very specifically and very deeply so i'm gonna i'm gonna show customers and items specifically for this demo but you can also do this on vendor records and you can also even track change logs on uh, your bank accounts your orders various different things if anybody's using change logs for field monitoring today uh, you probably have a, a difficult time as i've always found going into those change logs and seeing what actually has changed so to kind of uh, give a sneak peek at where we're going today. You can see now the change logs directly in that record. So this would be my customer record. We can see all the different modifications and changes that we've made. But to start at the top, what History and Statistics is doing is giving you a deep dive into that one record. So I'm on customer 100. For this customer, we can see how much we've sold to them, what their current uh, AR balance is, what's their average paydays, how quickly are we fulfilling it, are we delivering to them on time, what are they buying by item category? What are their monthly sales trends? So in this case, they were kind of uh, they're kind of low, and then all of a sudden in September, they bought one hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars from us. What did we do in September that made them get to that level? And how can we replicate that going forward? Right. So this allows your customer service team or your sales team to really get a deep dive into that customer record and maybe make some better decisions to sell that customer you know, some more inventory, uh, some more professional service, whatever you sell, get them to buy more of, right? We can see on average what their paydays are and what their trends are. For this one customer specifically, where is all of their AR sitting? What's their balance trend? So here we can see that their, their AR balance just continuously goes up. They may pay us every once in a while, but overall, um, we may wanna implement some credit limits for this customer it's looking like, right? Uh, what have we sold to this customer in the last 12 months? What are they buying? In this case, they bought half a million dollars worth of Microsoft Surface 8s. When that Microsoft Surface 9 calls uh, comes out, this is the first customer I'm calling to make sure that you know we get them to buy another half a million. Where are they located on a map? What's every item they've bought from us? What were their quantities, the amounts, the last sales date? Again, I think I think you're starting to get the idea of what what the power of a tool like this is, right? You don't have to go to four or five different screens now to get all this data. It's all encompassed on one screen, uh, kind of at a very, uh, a very detailed level, really. We can see all the open order lines, open quotes, open returns, uh, jobs, if they were doing jobs, posted invoices, uh, and then of course that change log that we talked about before. So think of this as that one-stop shop for your customer service, uh, your customer success, your sales team, anybody who needs to look deeper into your customer records, they can do so here. The same is going to exist on vendors for your purchasing team. Uh, and then out of all of this, I really like the, the uh, item history and statistics because what we can do here with the item history and statistics is see everything for this item. When we get down to the orders, I think you'll see why. So we can have the quantity on hand, how many we have available, how long it takes us to get this item, our day supply and age of inventory, our sales and purchase trends. So we can see, you know, we bought 100 of them, but we only sold 10. We bought another 39 and we only sold 14. And then by August, our sales and purchasing metrics kind of start to mirror each other, which is good. Uh, we can see our inventory levels, um, our on-hand inventory levels by month. Uh, our purchase and sales price trends. So this has come in really handy over the last few years. Um, this probably isn't a realistic situation where the price went down. Usually for my clients, I'm seeing a lot of their inputs are going up, right? But the sales price trends are hopefully also going up to uh, keep those margins the same, right? This is probably the coolest part right here. So on sales and purchase documents that we have here, this is literally every single open quote from a sales quote, sales order, sales return, purchase quote, purchase order, and purchase return, right? So it gives us a holistic view of literally everywhere this item is right now in our system. In our case up top, looked like we were doing pretty good on inventory, but I've seen a lot of instances where clients will plug this in. They've got you know a surplus of a thousand items. They come down here and they've got no quotes or orders and they have 10 purchase orders, right? And it's like, okay, you know, you can start to use this 
quantitative data to start to make some qualitative decisions, right? So if we already have a surplus of inventory, why are we buying more, right? Now conserving our, our warehouse space to maybe get some other things, maybe some more high margin items, things like that, right? Again, if we've got open jobs for this item, production orders, uh, what's our inventory valuation uh, by location looking like? If you're using bins, it will show you all of your bin data here. Uh, our aging statistics, so all the items, when we purchased them, how much we purchased them for, how old they are, right? So um, in some cases, this may matter. In some cases, it may not. It may also depend on your costing method. But, you know, if I'm in food and beverage or something and I've got 387 uh, days, that's my inventory age, just looking at general expiration dates, that's probably not good, right? We either need to to use this or find something else to, to do with it before it expires. And then finally, just our change logs again. Now, I know I talked about these a little bit earlier. They come in handy because now we can see without having to go to our change logs, what has changed, who changed it, uh, when, what date and time was it changed, and then the old value uh, and the new value. So again, we started the conversation with financial dashboard and sales dashboard, kind of those high level metrics for your business. And now we're we're going on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So now we're getting as detailed and as deep as we can into this data. Uh, I see a few things popping up in the chat. I'm just about to transition over to our warehouse dashboard. So now is another great time to answer some more questions if anybody's got questions on the uh, history and statistics dashboard that we showed today. Yeah, Ben, uh, so let me go ahead and hop in here real quick. Uh, yeah, we just had a it. poll that was posted in the chat. Give this comment a thumbs up if you've ever wished you had dashboards like this in Business Central coming from Addy. And just kind of want to double down on this while we get some thumbs up on that, Ben. These dashboards, they truly do operate as that one-stop shop, and they are incredibly fast to configure up. Ben, once you say history and statistics probably will take even less time because it's just pulling from everything natively in Business Central. Uh, can we give everyone an idea <laughs> of if they did the free trial, how long this would take to get set up? Yeah, absolutely. And I can I can show some behind the, the scenes stuff as well, right? So if you're looking to get history and statistics set up, when I talk about configuration, literally it's just a bunch of check boxes, right? So do you want to turn these things on or not? And for history and statistics, it's just asking you if you want to show the change logs or not. There's some other minor things here like the uh, expected shipment date, things like that. But you can see that most of this is just turning some toggles on and entering your activation key down here. Uh, there's also a map integration, which is probably the only thing you really need to look at the user guide for um, just because you have to generate this API key. It's free from Google, um, but that's really the only configuration piece there. Everything else is is really kind of up and running as soon as you uh, download and it's all pulling from out of box fields and windows. That's awesome, Ben. We did get a question that came in as well too. Item history shows everything open. How about everything open, closed, all transactions in any part of BC for an individual part number? So we've got something else called the sales document search, um, which I think answers Angie's question uh, exactly. So basically what this is gonna do is it shows all the different documents. So I'm just gonna say, yeah, include all of them. And then across all of your sales documents in the system, you can actually filter by header fields as well as line fields. So let's say, uh, what was your example? Um, everything for an item. So I could come in here. I know I have a ton of stuff under that item 1017. I can just type that in here. And I'm going to hide these to give myself some more real estate. But essentially what this is going to do is it's going to give me everything that you just asked for, right? It's giving me all the open quotes, uh, the orders, the invoices, return orders, shipments. Uh, so now we're getting into posted documents, right? Every posted shipment, uh, I got a lot of shipments here. Uh, orders, uh, is, yeah, I just have a ton of stuff. So I'll keep scrolling while I talk, but uh, we should see a bunch of other stuff in here um, as well. And the main purpose for, uh, there we go, posted invoices. The main purpose for building this and being able to search on these various fields is, I'm assuming exactly why you asked the question, right? There's five or six different places in Business Central to go to based on what state a document is in. We built this to make it less confusing so that you can just type in the order number or the item part number or even the tracking number or date, right? And return a data list that shows it across multiple tables. Because really what we're doing here is 
bringing in data from all these sales documents, right? Quotes, orders, invoices, which are all on their own pages in Business Central, even though they're technically in the same table, right? As well as all the archive documents. Because after, you know, after you post that sales order, it disappears from the sales order table, right? Where does it go? It goes to the archives. So we're also displaying those. So hopefully that answers your question. I am reading your mind. Great, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the comment. Awesome. So uh, and that that sales document search is actually part of history and statistics. So it's not it's not embedded directly on the um, on the item from a, a holistic standpoint. But if I come into the item here, I also have a similar view that's kind of drilled down. So in order to get into history and statistics, you come into your item, click process and then click um, history and statistics. Let me do that again here real quick. Let me refresh this. I think I got out of that and it got. Oh, now I'm just clicking buttons too fast. Uh, I'll show you that in a second when it pops back up because I, I think I clicked too many things. But uh, for that item 1017, I can also see it on that history and statistics page. So we'll pull that back up here real quick. Um, I've got about five minutes before I want to get into uh, invoice and statement delivery grant. So let me. OK, this is going to. This is going to work here. Um, let's come down to our. Where is it? I know it's on here somewhere. I've got that same search function just for items. Unless I hit it. Hold on one second. I'm going to go to the very bottom. Uh, it must be on the customer page. So I don't think we have it on the item page, but I could we could add it in there likely. Um, but that same view we just saw we can do at the uh, the customer level as well. So uh, that looks like Angie. So I can follow up with that on that one personally. We have it on the uh, just the customer right now. We don't have it on the item. But as you saw, if you want to do it across the whole system, not looking at any specific item or customer, um, we can also do that there. So I'm going to spend a few minutes here on the warehouse dashboard as our last and final uh, dashboard that we have kind of pre-built and pre-baked into Business Central. Again, it's going to look and feel very similar to the others. So on the warehouse side, we can analyze uh, our shipments, our receipts, our inventory counts and adjustments, inventory, vendor activity, sales order activity, purchase order activity. Uh, right now I'm in the shipments tab so we can see how much have we shipped today, this week, this month, this year, and what are our daily averages. So I can see today I've shipped $1,200 worth of um, inventory. Uh, that consisted of five shipments and 11 shipment lines. Uh, that must be the only one I've done this week because this week is the same. This month, I've done 15 shipments of 21 lines. And on average, uh, I'm doing $650 worth of shipped value uh, in a day. And I'm on average doing one shipment a day. So I can now see my uh, shipment shipments by line by date. I can see my uh, yearly shipments year over year to see how much volume. I can see monthly shipments, monthly shipment lines. And then this one I like a lot, the day of the week shipments. So how do we use this data to make decisions, right? Because that's ultimately what it comes down to. Sure, all these graphs are nice and pretty, but we want to be able to use data to make better decisions for our business, right? So a lot of times I'll come in here and I'll see, okay, you know, you're doing all of your shipments on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, but you have your warehouse employees on an eight to five shift Monday through Friday, right? What if, you know, we didn't have anybody in the warehouse shipping stuff on Thursdays and Fridays because we never ship anything out anyway, and we have them work on, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, or we just kind of double down on those days. How much more efficient could we be? How much money could we save? All of these different factors that go into making decisions off of the data that we're looking at, right? Receipts is going to look very similar, um, just, of course, on the, the purchasing side. So we've looked now at shipments. What's our shipment volume? Now let's look at our receipt volume. So how much are we receiving on a... Uh, today, this week, this month, uh, this year basis. What are our, our receipts by date? Um, what are our year to date uh, receipts here that we've got? Oh, come on. All right, there we go. Our receipts today, this week, this month, this year. Again, same things that we just saw um, on the shipment side. If you do a lot of inventory counts or you want to keep people accountable for doing their inventory counts, we can look at the counts and adjustments. So this is going to show how many counts have been done today, this week, this month, this year. Looks like we haven't done anything here, so that's not good. Uh, we definitely need to, to get on that and make sure that uh, we're counting. And then we can also see, OK, maybe 10 counts have been done. How many adjustments were needed, right? We counted 10. There were 11. We had to make uh, adjustments accordingly, right? Um, and then this is probably the last thing I'll show here before we jump into invoice and statement delivery. But 
uh, would highly encourage um, looking into looking into the uh, free trials here in order to get some more uh, hands-on experience with our dashboard. So again, just some additional sales order by dimension. Um, this is going to be our sales order dashboard. So anything that's identified as having uh, items unavailable, we can specifically look at these. We can do, you know, print our packing list, go to the sales order, reprint our pick ticket, um, all things like that for any of these items that aren't ready available uh, in the system today. So with that, I'm going to jump over to invoice and statement delivery, which is uh, our first automation productivity tool that we'll be talking about today. And we'll also talk about some additional things that you can get out of our essentials bundle. So Grant, I'll take another pause. Any other questions come in while I was doing that? Otherwise, I'll spend the next 10 minutes or so on invoice and statement delivery. Nothing coming in through the chat box, Ben, but uh, just as a little primer for everyone on the call, we have quite a few different public reviews for this tool. This is by far our number one most used extension in the BC toolbox that Boyer ERP Connect offers. Uh, quick testimonial here, this solution has saved our company countless hours when we bill our clients. Interface is very easy to use and it's highly configurable for auto emailing customers. So we've seen on average that invoice and statement delivery reduces days at sales outstanding by just a little bit over 20%. So this is highly effective for saving your team time. It's going to cut manual work by a couple of hours a week and just kind of want to give everyone that primer before we hop into this. This is a highly, highly powerful automation tool. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go one level further too that um, both Boyer on their um, internal business central instance as well as erp connect we we both use invoice and statement delivery to process our own invoices so i'll i'll even double down on that and say we really do practice what we preach uh, i use all of these tools to kind of better our business and of course our whole uh, portfolio of clients that's using them is giving similar feedback that that grant just said so as we jump into invoice and statement delivery again why did we create this or why are people using it, right? The the main driving factors behind there are the ability to uh, post your uh, invoices, your credit memos, and your payment receipts that we have here. And you can automatically have those be emailed immediately when you click post. So skip those dialogue boxes, skip all the different like options that Business Central asks you. Is this the email you want to send it to? This the body, you know, okay, now you can finally click send and maybe you have to do one document at a time, right? Th those days are over with using invoice and statement delivery because as soon as you're posting that document, you can send it. If you want, you can turn this off as you get started. And then it's basically going to send all of these documents to a invoice delivery dashboard. And then at the end of the day, you can just go select them all and click send. And then it's going to send all of your invoices out uh, via email. And then the third option, if you don't want to email them on post and you don't want to manually send them, but you still want some automation around it, you can set this up to run on a job queue. So let's just say you're posting, posting, posting throughout the day. And then at five o'clock, you just have it scheduled automatically to say, hey, anything that's been posted but hasn't been sent, go ahead and send it, right? So those are kind of the, the sending options. And then in terms of actually getting this set up, um, you can CC yourself in. So I'm sending all these documents out to my customers on a weekly basis, right? Maybe I CC myself in so I get a copy in my inbox. Uh, you can have different reports. So let's say I process an invoice, but I need to switch the invoice form before it goes out. These are the different options you can select from to say, okay, you know, usually Business Central defaults to 1306, but I have a custom 50500 that I want to switch it to. Okay, I can post it and then switch it after the fact. Who does it come from, right? So if you do default, just whoever's you know signed in and whatever email accounts you have set up, that's who it'll send from. But you can also use um, scenarios. So if you use out of box email scenarios from Business Central, you can have sales invoices uh, appear as if they're coming from one person, have credit memos come from another person, right? So some toggles and some differentiators there to say, hey, maybe all invoices come from uh, Ben, but all payment receipts come from Grant, right? We'd have the ability to do that. And it would literally be sending from Grant's, uh, it would literally be sending from Grant's email and it would show up in his sent mail. And if they responded to him, it would go directly to uh, Grant in that case, right? We also have these email body memos. So I like to point these out because they are rich text HTML. So there's no 
uh, there's no rocket science behind these, right? You can just type these like you're typing a normal email. You can bold things, you can italicize things, you can throw links in there, uh, you can throw wild cards in there. So this is actually my lot. Uh, this is a copy uh, of the template from my live environment. So it's saying, hey, please find our invoice, you know, one, two, three, four attached for the customer name. The amount due is $10,000 and the due date is February 1st, right? So not only are they getting that invoice attachment, but they're also getting a detailed invoice body that's giving them details and insights directly into uh, what invoices that they're about to uh, receive. So again, invoices, credit memos, payment receipts, going to work all uh, almost exactly the same, uh, either send on posting, send from the dashboard, or send from the job queue. So those are, think of those as, hey, this is the first time we're posting the document, right? Then if we get into more of a collections mindset, that's where the statements and the past due reminders come into play. So statements are going to work similarly to statements in out-of-box business central except we've built a ton more automation around this we give you both a dashboard to send these from as well as the ability to schedule these on a job queue so maybe the first of every month you just send out everybody who's got a balance you send them a statement you can even turn on to send zero balance statements if you'd really like and then we also have the ability to exclude on hold invoices so if you if you use this in the customer ledger entries, you can put various invoices on hold with a three letter code. If there's a code in there, it won't include it on the statement and it won't include it uh, in the attachments, which we'll get into um, in a second. Past due reminders. This is this is not available at all in Business Central um, today. It's only available with our tool. So what past due reminders do um, kind of takes statements and similar to if you're familiar with like finance charges and business central i think calls it reminders too but it works it works quite differently than ours past due reminders are literally looking at and saying okay two days before the invoice is due send them a reminder that says hey your invoice is coming due in two days then every seven days after that send them a follow-up reminder that says your invoice was due on january 1st right and then seven days 14 days 21 days 28 days it's going to keep sending those reminders until that remaining amount goes to zero at which point the reminders will drop off when grant was talking about decreasing day sales outstanding this is one of the main driving factors in doing so along with sending those statements in an automated fashion the one other thing we add to the statements is the ability to include invoice copies with the statement. So when that statement goes out, usually the biggest thing that I hear when getting emails back originally was, hey, I see this invoice on my statement. I never received that invoice, right? So this gets around that and it's here's the statement and here's all of the invoices. And you can toggle that on or off. You don't have to include uh, the attachments, but we highly recommend that you do just because it helps save a lot of back and forth. And then the final piece is this recurring documents piece that we have here. So if you use the copy document function today, if you use recurring sales lines today, anything where you're taking something that you've done before and just copying it and changing things, this recurring documents can be a huge time saver. What this allows you to do is, uh, and we can jump into kind of a live demo for the next five minutes or so. Uh, when we get into our recurring sales documents, which is a custom function now that we've built, I can come into one and think of this as your template. When I'm working with these recurring documents, we've added in recurring settings that says, okay, every one month generate this, what's the next time it's gonna be generated, uh, what's the next posting date, and what items or GL accounts are are on here, right? So this is a this is a great tool to be able to help kind of set those templates up and then automatically generate them. The other thing that you can do uh, under here is the recurring posting type so we have the ability when they're created to create them and leave open create them and release them or create them and post them so if you really want to get in a fully automated fashion you could have your recurring sales invoice automatically create every month automatically post every month and then if you have the send on post turned on it will even email those out so really that whole end-to-end -end automation in terms of creating recurring invoices and sending those can all be accomplished through recurring documents and our invoice and statement delivery um, tool here. I just saw a question pop up. Let me look at that one real quick. Uh, can the invoices uh, be sent from a shared mailbox instead of a specific person? Um, so all of the emailing is gonna go through kind of the out of box configuration. So you are able to set up um, shared mailboxes, Office 365 accounts. Um, you can even do SMTP if, if that's something that you're interested in. But as long as you can set it up and assign it to a scenario in out of box business central, you can utilize that in invoice and statement delivery. 
uh, when the past due reminders go out, does it send a statement of all invoices or is it sending a copy of the specific invoice that's past due? Uh, it's sending the specific invoice that's past due because the past due reminders are basically just saying this one individual document is now overdue. Uh, if you wanted to send out everything, I'd recommend uh, using the statements. Uh, can the statements and past due reminders be customer specific? Uh, yes, you can either use the out of box document layouts. We do have a custom form that we use for statements, which we find honestly, I would say almost every customer has just adopted that's plugged our tool in because they like our statement more than what they had before. Um, but you can toggle different statements if you need. And then if the email is automated upon posting, we'll also email the attachment added to the sales invoice draft upon posting. If you have any documents, and I'll show you that real quick while we have a few minutes left, uh, Grant, I'll leave you and Addy a few minutes at the end as well to recap everything. But let's say I'm in a sales order or a sales invoice. It's got, sales order is going to generate a sales invoice at the end of the day, right? So if I were to come in here, yeah, I did a demo earlier for prepayment. So let's look at this one. If I were to come in here and look at our attachments, I should have got a lot of different things going on that one. I should have an include in emails ISD. So if you have any additional attachments besides the invoice that's going out, you would simply load your attachments here, make sure this checkbox is enabled, and then those documents would also go out. So a lot of times people will have supporting documentation, they might have time entries that they include, they might have uh, materials lists or anything like that. Uh, as long as you have that checkbox on here, it'll flow through the posting and then also send along uh, with that. And then again, as you're sending them out for a second, third, fourth time, if needed, uh, as long as that checkbox is on, that'll flow through to the posted document table. Uh, that will also um, continue to flow through. The last thing I want to show, Grant, and then I'll pass it back to you because I know we only have a few minutes left here. There's a lot to get through. It's the invoice delivery dashboard. So this is kind of the bread and butter of checking on what's been sent out in the past. So here in my dashboard, I can see uh, what's been sent, what's pending, if it was sent, what time it was sent, what day it was sent, who sent it. Uh, I can click right back into it. Uh, and then if I needed to send out a brand new one, like these all look like uh, they've been posted recently, I can simply come up here, click print send, send email selected, click yes. And again, I could select, I could select everything in my list if I really wanted to. And now, uh, now that's been sent out and I will show you real quick and then pass it back over for the conclusion. But Invoice and statement delivery, I could talk about for probably two hours if I really wanted to, just because there's so much functionality baked into that. Um, but just to kind of cap things off, this is the email that I just received at 157. We can confirm that that's the same time. It sent it to me. It also copied in that email I had in my test. It included the sales invoice and then also showed me, hey, you know, here's the invoice, here's the amount due, here's the due date. And then it attaches my invoice copy. I didn't, I didn't put anything else in there, but. That is kind of the gist of invoice and statement delivery. And again, just helps you automate everything that you could possibly imagine in your AR department for getting those invoices, credit memos, statements, all that good stuff out. And then also making sure that they're followed up on to make sure that they get paid in a timely manner. So with that, Grant, I will pass it back to you and Addy to take us home. I'm gonna swap that so we get the full view and I'll let you close us out. All right, let's land the plan on this one, guys. So we're very into simple call to actions for this presentation so what we posted in the chat box everyone because we know that on this call is a mix of current clients of boyer clients that may be on the support side in the midst of an implementation or maybe this is your first exposure to boyer erp connect if you have any questions on pricing free trials how to get started reach out to addy rodman and she'll be able to help you. If you have any questions about coffee or if you're still waiting on something or your code isn't working to get your free coffee, reach out to me. Or if you just wanna say hi, I've got you covered too. In terms of resources for Boyer ERP Connect, every single one of our extensions is available on AppSource. If you just go and you search ERP Connect Consulting, you will have 28 different extensions. The ones that we focused on today are called our Essentials Bundle.
those are the seven extensions that we think every BC user can benefit from. Within those app source listings, you're going to have walkthrough videos, summaries, screenshots, pretty much everything you need. If you want a Boyer specific look at the ERP Connect tools, you can go to Boyer's ERP Connect page as well. We also have a YouTube channel. We'll have everything posted there, demos, walkthroughs, easy ways to set up your free trials as well. Final piece here, gonna pass it off to Addy. If anyone has any more questions, please feel free to put them into the chat box as well, but Addy, take us home. Thank you, Grant, and thank you, Ben, for that excellent demo of all the essential tools. I think you must have taken advantage of two of the free coffee forms because you talked really fast, but I think we got a lot covered, which is very exciting. Um, but there's always more to learn and more to see, so reach out to myself. As Grant said, there's plenty of content and information out there for you to digest, but we're also to just happily walk you through it. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, looking forward to hearing more from everybody on this. Awesome. Thanks for having us, Bye. Addy. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks all. Take care. Have a great day.